Hello everyone, my name is Luis Juarez and I'm a senior chemical engineering student at the University of Tulsa. Today I'll be discussing my research project which involves finding the methods for obtaining crystalline silicon from sand. Before I begin my research presentation, I want to thank all of the Turk learners for their kind donations and making the Turk program possible. Thank you for providing myself and many other students here at the University of Tulsa with this amazing opportunity. My involvement with Turk actually begins through the Turk Junior Program while I was a junior in high school. I took part in Dr. Shee's research group, which focuses in cultivating cells that will be later used for cancer research. More recently, I've been working with Dr. LeBlanc and the Silicon Project. So what is the Silicon Project? The Silicon Project involves finding a method to obtain crystalline silicon or C-CI from silicon dioxide, CiO2. Silicon dioxide is the main component of sand and therefore can be found in various places throughout Earth's crust. On the other hand, crystalline silicon is a more difficult material to be obtained, and especially a more difficult material to obtain from silicon dioxide. The main component, the main uses of crystalline silicon is to build solar panels and new technologies such as computer and cell phones. For this reason, Silicon, silicon Valley is given its name silicon because of crystalline silicon. So why is it so difficult to obtain crystalline silicon from, from sand? Well, sand structure is very compacted and therefore very stable. For this reason, sand has a high boiling point of higher than 1,000 Fahrenheit. Compared to water, it is simply 100 Fahrenheit. For this reason, current methods used in the industry to separate and obtain silicon from sand need, require high amounts of energy. Also, these methods are really expensive and can be dangerous due to the amounts of chemicals that are used. My project that I'm currently working on is finding a different method to obtain a crystalline silicon from sand. A potential method is to use something called an electrodeposition, which it's basically applying a high voltage to an amount of sand dissolved in a liquid in order to separate the silicon and the oxygen that make silicon dioxide. In theory, we can apply this voltage and then separate the SI from the oxygen gas. But then, then we can use an electrode, which will be made out of a metal such as gallium, as seen on the picture, or a platinum, which then will pull the silicon out of the electrode solution. Then we can then purify it since all the other components of sand will be in this solution while the crystalline silicon will be pulled via the electrode. The electro that will be used, the electro solution that we'll be planning to use is something called an ionic liquid. The ionic liquid is simply a charged liquid made out of positive and negative charges. This is very important because ionic liquids are one of the few liquids that can actually sustain sand for the electro deposition to work. And also they have a high voltage window, which means that we can have a large um, room to work on and in order to, uh, in order to put a lot of high voltages and have a strong force to separate the components of CI and oxygen gas. They're also relative cheap to synthesize and can be easier synthesized than other methods used in the industry. The picture on the right shows the technique known as psychovoltometry, where we measure the, win um, the voltage windows of these ionic liquids. While the picture on the left actually shows the setup for all of the experiments of using the electroposition method to try to obtain the crystalline silicon from sand. During my time here with this project, I've been able to synthesize 
several different ionic liquids and test them to see how much sand they can hold and how much voltage we can place in this liquid before the liquids itself start to decompose. I found that several different ionic liquids work differently as well as they hold different amounts of sand. However, something that they have in common is that they tend to pull water from the environment. This is something that has a, presented a challenge to our research group since having water and electricity, it's a bad thing. Since we tend to split the water, forming hydrogen gas and oxygen gas instead of silicon and oxygen gas. If we're able to remove all the water from all the setups and all the ionic liquids, we can possibly obtain silicon dioxide from sand. If this is the case, then we'll be able to use the silicon to build solar panels and build possibly computers and cell phones. With that, I wanna thank all of the parties involved during my time at the TURP program. I want to thank the University of Tulsa and the Chemistry and Biochemistry Department for providing me a space to work on during this project. I want to thank CSERP and STEMA for their uh, amazing experience while they're working on this project. And a special thanks to Dr. LeBlanc and the LeBlanc Research Group for helping me uh, with questions and finding ways to work on the equipment in the lab. Again, I want to thank all of the Turk donors for their kind donations. It wouldn't be possible to work on this project without your help. So thank you in providing me this experience that will ultimately help all of my skills and then that will have helped me land a job in the chemical engineering industry. So thank you.